Hello and welcome to this video. This is Cadrix and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at selection tools. So by default in Fusion 360, you're probably going to have a single selection tool such as select. So with this select tool, you can select either from left to right or right to left. And you can see that it looks a little different. The right to left is like a dashed line. Now the difference with that is, and I'm going to show you by selecting the window selection, it's kind of the same concept. One is a full solid line and one is a dashed line. So if we drag from left to right, we select anything that is fully encased by our selection uh, region. So things such as this, the, the rightmost of the selection region are not fully inside the rectangle. So they don't actually get selected, but that is the opposite with the right to left selection tool. So if we do right to left, anything that intersects the region, even the ones that are not fully inside are added to the selection. So you can see, so it's selected even this. So I'm going to just do shift and uh, click it. So we've, uh, so you can even do it on this. So anything that intersects that box, even a tiny bit will be selected, but this is not the case with this one. Okay. So the only other one we have really to use apart from the last, well, we have the lasso selection. So I like to call it lasso from Fusion 360. Uh, I like to call it the lasso because of Photoshop, but essentially the freeform selection allows us to create a organic shape. So if we've got things to avoid, we can kind of draw around it. So let's do this. So let's do that. Oh, I don't want that. So I'm going to go around. Oh, I don't want that. I'm going to go around. And then we're going to go back. And then we're going to let go of the mouse. And I'm going to hold shift because I didn't want that. So you can see the ones that were we didn't want were excluded from the selection. Now you could see a second ago that one of the problems I was uh, facing was I was selecting this back profile. Now what we can do is tell Fusion to ignore profiles. Now to do this, we go to select and go to selection filters and by default, they should all be selected. So what we're going to do is either unselect sketch profiles, or what we can do is unselect select all, which unselect them all. Then if you can go to sketch curves. And if you don't know, a sketch curve is this sort of thing. That's a sketch curve. So now when we make our it's going to go from left to right. When we do our selection like this, we shouldn't have that issue we had from the beginning. So now we just have our sketch profiles. We should find that we can't even select it no matter what we do. We can't select this profile because we've told Fusion that that is not one of the things we care to look at. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back on now because I need them. Uh, for the rest of the tutorial. Okay, so some of the other tools you can find in here is select by name. So I've got two bodies here. One is called body one and the other is called body two. So what you can do is literally type in body one and it doesn't matter if it's capitalized or not. Uh, you can see body one, body two. And if you click on okay, it will select it or what you can do is click on find. So because body one exists, it gets selected. If we type in something that doesn't exist, like some random text and click find, nothing is selected because it doesn't exist. And of course, if you want it to select components instead of bodies, you click components. So if I'm right, because I've got components selected, find should not yield any result and it doesn't. So that is probably useful if you have a very complicated design with hundreds of uh, 
uh, bodies, for example, you could just type it in there and find it very quickly. So the other thing which I can talk about is invert selection. These two are a bit uh, a bit difficult to explain, so I am going to ignore them for now. So invert selection is literally what it sounds like. It inverts selection. So for an example, because we had nothing selected, everything was selected. So if I select just this, if I select, um, yeah, if I select just this body and go to select and selection tool invert selection, we should see, we should see, well, let's try it on this one. Go to select, selection tools invert selection. You can see that by inverting it, we deselect what we had selected and then select everything we didn't have selected. So that is exactly what we thought it was, invert selection. Not too sure how useful that might be, but maybe you would find it useful. So this selection priority is kind of useful actually in a way. By default, what I believe is select face priority is on. So what this means is what when we click on a shape or, or something like that, what do we select first? Do we select the face or do we select the body, the component, something like that? So by default, whenever you click something, it selects a face. That's what it goes for. Individual faces are selected. But by changing this to select body, whenever we click a body, the entire body is selected. So if we click on there, the whole body is selected. So that might be useful in some circumstance. And it'd probably be more useful if this was pinned to the toolbar rather than having to go through these menus. But I'm just gonna remove that now. So as you can imagine, edge priority, whenever you go over to a body, the edges are the first things to light up. So. That's edge priority. And for component priority, if you have components which are by default, uh, the, the main file is a component. So that's why these are being selected as one rather than individually. So to to get around that, we can go to we can go to create components for bodies. So we've got two components now. So if we go to select and select component priority which we see a little tick in the left hand corner showing that that is the current mode it will select that which both because both of them are bodies uh they're both selectable uh sorry because they're both separate components they are both selectable so yeah you can uh, experiment uh, with these um, which is pretty much self-explanatory, knowing the basics. Um, if we turn components off, for example, you can see that kind of added itself to this selection filter. We shouldn't even be able to select anything. So that's pretty much the most useless thing ever to have nothing selectable. One of the things is if you take these all off the selection filters and you can't select anything you and you forget about that, you will have a nightmare thinking, look, what is going on with this software? And even restarting it won't help the situation. And then you're going to be like, oh, damn it, selection filters. This has happened to me way too many times, way too many times. So if that ever happens, just think, just think and click on select all. Then you'll have fusion back to how it used to be. So, yeah, that's really all for selection filters. Um, this is just a, a primitive example. Uh, obviously, in the real world, you'd be selecting things that are not like a stupid grid array of circles, like you would have uh, much more different ways, but you have to kind of think about it uh, yourself. And uh, yeah. So anyway, I hope this video helped and uh, I hope it helps somebody out there. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Or if you found it horrendous,
please feel free to insult me in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to check out the previous video if you haven't already and the next video. Catch you in the next one.